Yeah. I'd like to introduce Paul Galantowicz. Mr. Galantowicz has been with VHA WNY, oh, we just lost him. Um, well, I'll finish the introduction. Hopefully, it will come back on that. BHA WNY healthcare system for 40 years, starting in nuclear medicine during patient care in Michigan. He managed the first position in Mission Tomography Center in Western New York, a joint product between the University of Buffalo and BHA WNY healthcare system collaborating on research projects, and after FDA approval, providing clinical imaging patient care for brain, heart, and oncology applications. He has presented at national meetings and has been credited for his contributions in journal publications on nuclear medicine and positron emission tomography. In 2011, he became the facility telehealth coordinator for VHA WMY healthcare system, and is responsible for the site program. And here's Paul. We'll just take a couple minutes um, for him to get set up. And then, you good? Hopefully I'm back. <laughs> That's all right. I finished reading your bio, so that brought some time. I'm sure you. I'm sure you did a great job. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'd like to say good afternoon to everybody. Can you still see my first slide up on the screen? Oh, uh, no, I think you're going to have to reshare. Okay, let's do that then. All right, tell me when that comes up. I got it. All right, we're rolling. That's the thing about technology. It's great when it works, but boy, let me tell you, when it doesn't, everybody <laughs> knows your name. So. <laughs> So I'm Paul Galanowitz. I'm uh, with the VA in Western New York. And uh, what I want to do today is talk a little bit about our program uh, called VA Video Connect. And it's our program that allows veterans to basically uh, connect with their providers and do visits. Uh, so um, it's kind of a homegrown program. So first of all, I'm going to take a look at um, an overview of the program and hopefully my goal by the end of this this uh, talk is to have you guys know a little bit more about this to be able to um, assist a veteran when they come into your facility or your 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 library uh, if they have questions and um, also point them in a direction that if there is more help needed that we can uh, provide those veterans. So first, I'm going to look at a little overview of uh, what the app was created for. And actually, this app was created back in 2017, before COVID. Uh, it came out, and uh, the VA being uh, having hospitals throughout the country uh, knew that we had a large rural population, and, and access has always been a question as far as getting rural veterans up to our facility to uh, see our providers. So we wanted to be able to increase the access to our veterans and we use telehealth as that form. And uh, originally we set up stations inside our community-based outpatient clinics, uh, which in the case of Western New York here, we have seven, uh, but every VA system has a, a series of community-based outpatient clinics. And there's equipment there for providers to be able to call into those, those um, sites so that the veteran doesn't have to travel far from home or um, uh, away from their family. VA Video Connect, what it allowed us to do was to be able to go into the veteran's home. And the nice part about uh, VA Video Connect is that it is a secure encrypted program. So uh, the VA is really big on protecting uh, the uh, patient's information. So uh, that's one of the things we prefer using our system over other things like FaceTime or Doximity or those other platforms. Um, basically what the, um, the app does is it allows uh, the provider to create an appointment for a veteran and it will uh, cause it to send out emails to the provider and the veteran at the specified time. 
And in these emails, there's a, a link that uh, puts the veteran and the provider into what we call a virtual medical room. And in that medical room, they can uh, join and they can uh, talk about different issues um, and uh, see themselves without having to come to the facility. So that was the main purpose behind this. Now, of course, when we started out in 17, it was kind of uh, not, not a big there was not a big use of it because as you know, people love change and uh, it was very hard not only to get our providers, but also our veterans to use it because uh, you know, our veteran population is on the older side, a lot of them that do take advantage of our facilities. So um, you know, there's certain things about technology that some of our old, older veterans are a little resistant to. Um, but then COVID came along and things shut down. So the big thing was, well, how do we get our services to our veterans? And that's when uh, Video to Home really took off is during the COVID period because people didn't wanna travel, people wanted to stay, uh, uh, stay safe, and we still wanted to be able to connect with our veterans, make sure they were getting the services and uh, providing the medical care that uh, was needed. Well, wrong way. Okay, so so let's talk about on the veteran side what the veteran really needs as far as uh, devices to uh, be able to uh, participate in VA Video Connect. Well, um, smart devices, a smartphone or a tablet or laptop um, provides a uh, a device that they can uh, receive emails on and also connect with their provider with. So basically you need something that has a camera and a microphone. If they were to use their computer, um, especially the older uh, desktop models, they would have to have a webcam associated with it. Uh, most laptops now have cameras in them, so that's not an issue anymore. Um, so uh, those are the requirements as far as hardware. As far as software, uh, what we do recommend for any of the smart devices, the tablets and the, um, uh, the phone devices is that they download the app called VA Video Connect. And VA Video Connect is available on, on platforms, on both the Apple platforms and the Android platforms. So uh, you can either go to your Google store or, or your Apple store and download it from there. Uh, we do recommend, at first we recommended just for downloading it to Apple devices because it needed it in order to connect um, and the Androids did not need it. But now we recommend, there's been updates as far as the program that it provides some nice features for both. So we recommend that it's downloaded for either one. Uh, if they're using a, um, a, a PC, a Microsoft PC program, uh, you do not need to download the app. But if you are using an Apple device, uh, uh, say a, a Mac uh, PC or a uh, Mac computer, you still do need to download VA Video Connect in order to use it, in order to use the, uh, the platform. So another issue that comes up as far as uh, connecting to the internet, um, either our patients out in the rural, rural areas, one of the problems they face is what we call a digital divide. They don't have uh, access to good internet connection. Um, so what you will find is that in areas, even though Verizon may say we cover 100% of the country, uh, if you're on the wrong side of the mountain in some place, you're not covered. You know, you, you may have to go to the end of your driveway to get a signal. Um, so. Uh, some of the new infrastructure bills are dealing with this, trying to get, um, get this digital divide um, in a more equitable fashion for rural populations. But until that infrastructure is in place, uh, it's best uh, that we can find an area where it's either has a hardwired Wi-Fi to it. So that's where you guys come in as far as libraries. Uh, it's, it's an area where uh, our veterans can go to, and even if they sat in the parking lot in, the, in their car, they could connect to a, a reliable Wi-Fi that they can do their visit with. Um, so Wi-Fi is important. The other, the other thing is uh, with cellular data uh, and doing video, video 
takes up a lot of data. So uh, if you're just going over cellular, uh, like a 4G or, or 5G, um, you're not going to get as quality a, um, a visit as you would over a hardwired or a Wi-Fi system. So, so prefer, we prefer to have them on some type of Wi-Fi system or hardwired. Uh, the other thing that originally was required um, when we started the app was that the patient have an email address. Now, a lot of people, you know, email addresses are and emails are kind of getting like passe and old and everybody does texting now, you know, they get on there and they, uh, you know, send texts to each other about everything. So um, we do provide uh, access to these links through the platform to either uh, uh, an email address or by getting a text now. So um, you, can, you can use either option. And uh, as far as the browser that the patient uses, uh, you know, like an Apple, you usually default to a Safari browser and most of the Androids are like on a Google browser. Uh, we recommend that uh, the browser it goes to is either uh, an Edge or a Chrome br uh, browser. So. Those are the uh, most reliable we found. And um, so as far as what's needed, as far as the veteran to set up their device, uh, like I said, the first, first thing that is really needed is for them to download the VA Video Connect app from uh, either the Google Play Store, if it's an Android or Apple App Store, if it's for an Apple system. Uh, once downloaded, um, It'll prompt you, you'll usually get prompts about whether or not to allow access for your camera and your audio. And it's very important that when the veteran does this process that they allow the access because otherwise you can run into situations when they do their first visit that maybe they allowed the camera but there's no sound because they didn't allow access to the microphone. And uh, there are opportunities to go back and change those settings. But uh, what we have found when we were training most of our veterans is that um, a lot of them are not real proficient as far as using like a smartphone or a tablet. I mean, when you get into these little nuances of changing settings and things like that, um, that's where you run into problems uh, as far as uh, getting them to, to do that. So it's best if they do it right off the bat, that way it eliminates it. Uh, Apple devices, uh, they will ask uh, f at the first video uh, visit also whether or not to allow the camera or audio, which you would say yes to. Um, I had a thought coming in here and it'll come back to me in a second. But the other thing is that on the apps, um, once you download that app to your device, you're not going to open it again. It just it needs to sit on the device. That's used as like a portal by the uh, link that you receive in order to connect to the VA system. So when you get that, that email, you don't go to your app and open it uh, up that you downloaded, the VA Video Connect app. You're just going to use the link in that email or that text to combine, and it'll it will see the portal on your system and use that portal to get into the VA system. That's why it's important that it sits there, okay? Um, so that's, that's basically what you need to get your, your device set up, all right? Just being able to have that. And if you're, you're dealing with a uh, um, uh, laptop, computer, Microsoft system, uh, you don't need the app on there. The uh, the link will work just through the email net. So you don't you eliminate all that of uh, doing it uh, that way. But the people that'll be coming into the libraries, if they're coming in for help, will either have their smartphone with them or their tablet device. So those are the people that you know will need to know that that app has to be downloaded. So. Once you get it downloaded, it's nice to kind of know that everything's set up and working. So there are different ways that you can test your device. And the first way that uh, you can test your device is they created what we call a text bot. And if you type in the number three, uh, 830293 and you type in the letter V, 
if you send V to that number, you will get an automated text box, a te text bot that will come up and will walk you through a test. So basically, this is the first page here, and it'll ask you a series of questions before it goes to the test. Uh, the first thing about, you know, do you have an email account? Um, now, they this text was uh, put out before we actually had the um, texting option available to the uh, uh, veterans. So I always say just answer yes to it, whether or not you have the email, because if you don't have the email, you're going to be getting your, your links through text. So if you answer yes to it, um, it, the next question will ask you, what type of system do you have? Do you have an Android or do you have an Apple system? And, uh, and of course, it also says this will not work for flip phones. So you have to have some type of smart device with a screen that you can actually do um, things like FaceTime with or, or that. So, um, so if you answer the, uh, you know, whatever device you have. And the next step is it's going to send you the link for doing the test. Okay. And, uh, or actually previous to that, it's going to send you to install the video connect uh, app here. So you would click on that app. You would go through the installation process and store that. After that, then it sends you the text link uh, to the test test environment. When you click on that link, it'll take you to the test environment and you will, oh, that was one ahead here. Okay. It'll take you to the test environment and it'll, it'll say, yes, if you can hear the, uh, you can hear the voice and you can see your image that everything is set to go. So you are all set as far as the test environment. If uh, you're looking at emails and you want to do a test and you don't want to do through the text box, bot and you actually want to speak to a person, uh, what you can do is you can either contact the national telehealth number, which I have listed here, which is uh, 1 866 651 3180. And that help number is available 24 hours a day. So there is somebody manning the phones there 24 hours a day. Um, here locally in Western New York, we have our own hotline, which goes to all the techs here in the uh, office here in Buffalo. So one of our techs will pick that up. And this is the number you're, we're available from eight to four. Um, you can call us. We can, uh, if you're having issues with anything as far as um, getting your uh, device set up, or you just want to do a text, test call before you do your visit, this is the number to call and we will send you out an email invite and we will actually do a test call with you and correspond with you. So once we get everything set up and the patient and their family or whoever is waiting for the first appointment, when that appointment is scheduled, they will receive either, depending on what they've chosen or both, they can receive a uh, email invite and the email invite invite will be titled video appointment. So this is what you would see here with the little uh, attachment. And when you look into that attachment and open it up, it'll show you the appointment information, when the appointment is occurring, what time it is, Eastern Standard Time. And the patient will just have initials. Uh, one thing that, uh, they stressed as far as when they put out this, this format is that they didn't want any PHI for the patient in those emails. So um, there's very limited data, just the, uh, the time of the appointment and the initials of the appointment. And then this join the VA video connect appointment. This is actually the link that the veteran would click on, click, click on, <laughs> click on to join the appointment. So, uh, this, would, this goes ahead and opens up uh, the virtual medical room uh, where they will wait for their patient. Now, if it's a text message, they will receive a similar thing telling them the date and time of their appointment, which is upcoming. It'll also show them, uh, give them the link. Now, there are, this is not just a one-time text or a one-time email. Uh, depending on how far out your appointment is, 
you will receive, you could receive up to four emails or up to four messages. Uh, you will receive one the, the day that it's scheduled saying you have the appointment, seven days prior to the appointment, uh, the day before the appointment and the day of. And those appointments will have the link on there to join. So there are several opportunities here um, not to lose the email or, or delete the email and be you know, out of luck for uh, joining your appointment or having to have it reset. So the one thing about the appointment since when it comes in, especially if you're doing, if you're doing emails, if you don't see the appointment at one of these times is we have the patients check their junk mail or their spam email, there might be something they have set in their software um, or their antivirus uh, software that causes it to go to spam. So um, we have them check that, but there are numerous uh, emails that are sent out to remind them. Once they, uh, the day of the appointment, whoa, we don't want that yet. <laughs> Sorry about that. So once once the um, they receive the email and they open it up, they click the link. The first screen they're going to see is what you have over on the left hand side here, and it's going to ask for the patient's name first of all, and then the next will be uh, since the the invites can also include a caregiver that we have a box for checking off if they're a guest of uh, not the patient or. or the patient for this appointment. So they can check that off to show that'll be that there's a guest along with it. The second portion, which is very important, is the location of the video appointment because uh, a person with a mobile device could be anywhere, They're not necessarily in their home, <laughs> in their home, but also they could be uh, they could be see, sitting at a local McDonald's or they could be at the library or they could be in the corner of Tim Hortons. The importance of the location is if there is an emergency, either a medical or behavioral emergency, it's very important that we know where the veteran is so that we can get help to them in case there's, there's something going on. So um, when the doctor or the provider first gets on with the patient, the first thing that they are required to do is bring this up and it's, it's hooked into what we call an E911 system and go through the, um, the address with the patient. Now the patient can refuse to, uh, or the veteran can refuse to put that information in, but you know that'll be noted ahead of time and it's up to the provider whether or not they wanna continue the visit. So once they have that, they're gonna hit connect and uh, it'll take them to a, this next screen, which is on your right. And I'll play for you the little, little, Tell me if you can hear this. No? Okay. All right. Well, it's just telling it's um, telling them welcome to the VA Video Connect session, and uh, that it's a it's a safe and secure uh, private session. Uh, your provider will join you shortly. If it's more than 15 minutes before your, before your appointment time, you may want to sign off and come back in a few minutes. Um, so that's basically the spiel that it goes through. Sorry, I was hoping that was going to play. Um, the other things I just wanted to make note on the screen here, there are a few icons on the screen here. Uh, basically, the microphone is for turning on and off your microphone. The little uh, video uh, camera here is uh, for showing your, uh, your video. Uh, so you can turn on and off your video. Um, the camera icon with the circling arrows is for changing which camera you're using. On a smart device, you usually have a front and a back camera. So you could change your camera angle. So say you know, you're talking with your provider and they wanted to like see your home environment or there's something on your foot you wanna show them. It's a lot easier just to turn the camera around and show them something on your foot. Say if you were talking about something that's going on with that. The hand is for the chat, there's to be recognized. The information, it just kind of tells you information about the, uh, the program and everything, uh, kind of technical. You're really not gonna look at that. The most important thing on these is this little hang up button. 
Okay, so when, when you're done with the session, you're gonna wanna click that hang up button so that it takes everything off, okay? And uh, I'll, well, I'll, I'll talk about that in troubleshooting, okay? So, so that's basically it as far as connecting in with your provider and getting started with the session. Once you finish the session, both sides hang up and that's it. The, uh, when you do get the appointment, it's usually good for uh, 12 hours. That link is good for 12 hours. So if for some reason the veteran was late, say an hour late or something, and as long as the par provider agrees to it, they can still meet uh, in, within that day frame. Uh, if it's later than that, usually you can't, the link is no more, longer viable. So one of the things that comes up, of course, like I said, when technology works, it's great, but when it doesn't, um, that's when, you know, people get frustrated, not only, the, not only the veterans, but also the providers get frustrated. So, uh, some of the, the tips that we, uh, provide you as far as making it a better visit with, uh, the, the provider for um, uh, using the video VA Video Connect is that one one that they use either a Chrome or Edge browser. Browser uh, Apple usually defaults to a Safari window, which is fine. Um, I got I got touchy fingers here. Okay. Um, Another thing that we see with a lot of our veterans, since they're really not familiar with the operations of their smart devices, is open windows in the background. And what, what we, we found a lot of times what will happen is if you get a lot of open windows in the background, it'll slow down connections, it'll, it'll not, uh, the program won't be able to connect to it. Uh, so you get the spinning wheel of death in front of you while you're waiting for it to come up. So we recommend that, you know, they go back and uh, close all the windows that are open in the background. So uh, one way to do that is to go through it and close it. Another way is to totally shut your system off and then turn it back on. That'll also close all the windows in the back. Um, Another thing is uh, sometimes the veterans get a little fast with the clicking on the finger and they open two sessions. So all of a sudden they're in one session and when they open up the window, there's, their name is on there twice. Um, that'll cause issues as far as uh, when they're trying to communicate with their, their provider, either they won't be able to have audio, usually it's, they won't be able to have audio or they won't be able to get video signal. Poor signal, of course, is another problem. That's why we recommend about them being on either hardwired or to a Wi-Fi. Uh, cellular can be very iffy, especially in the rural areas. Like I said, um, video uses a lot of data. Uh, so it's what you'll get, start to see is you'll see pix pixelation and freezing when there's poor signal. So uh, if that's all the veteran has as far as their house, they have to you know, try to find what's the best area. I know I live in a relatively suburban area, but yet I have a room in my house where if I sit in, I can't get signal. So um, that's uh, something they need to be aware of. Cannot be on the phone while you're trying to connect with a provider. Uh, a lot of times what they'll ha what'll happen is uh, if they start a visit, and they don't have the audio, they call a provider or they call a provider and then they say, okay, I'll see you in a second here on the visit and they'll go into the video connect. Well, the problem with that is the phone has, uh, has control over the microphone. And if, if I only have one microphone, I can only give that out to one thing, okay? I can't have it on the phone and also on the video. So if they get on and the video connects, but there's no audio, it's because that veteran might still be on, on the phone with uh, the provider. Wrong email is something that happens. Our emails are uh, taken for right from the, uh, the patient's health record. Um, and usually when the appointments are set up, we confirm the email with the patient. Um, we have had occasion too, where if the patient has using a caregiver's email, we might get the wrong information. Uh, but that's something that can always be rectified with a phone call, we can resend out a new link right away. So that's not 
always a big issue, but you know, if it's like the guy says I'm on and the provider says I'm on, but nobody has, you know, they're not seeing each other. It's like being in two different rooms. So I did mention about email. Um, sometimes there is problems with it winding up in a spash, uh, a spam or a trash folder. So uh, that's one thing and did not click the page down, uh, page down on the start button. Okay, so they'll get to the, that screen and they'll just sit there with that screen on as far as typing in their information and in that and not going and paging down to the start button. A lot of it depends on which way you hold your phone too. Uh, now the screens I showed you were holding the phone straight up. Uh, if you turn it sideways, a lot of times you lose that information at the bottom and what you need to do is you need to page up and down to get that. So if they didn't hit the start button, they won't see that. So those are some of the common troubleshooting things. Now there is also, if you type in VA Video Connect onto uh, YouTube, there are a whole bunch of short videos that'll show you different aspects of VA Video Connect, whether it be troubleshooting, uh, you know, the veteran side, the provider side. So there's a lot of good information on YouTube. YouTube I find is such a valuable, can be such a valuable, uh, uh, tool because uh, you can learn so much on how to do something on YouTube. And, and for those of us that are visual learners, it's, it's really a great thing. So I recommend looking at it if you want to look at more information. I do want to help uh, emphasize the help desk numbers. We have the National Telehealth Help Desk, which is that number there, and the VA Video Connect, which is our number here. The only difference being the hours that they um, they operate, uh, both are very good. The people at the health desk, desk uh, once you get on uh, with the veteran, they're very good at helping you. So I recommend them. All right, so I've reached the end of my presentation here and I'm gonna open it up. If you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to field them. We've gotten a couple of questions already. Um, if anyone has questions, you can pop them in the chat or in the Q&A feature, and I will make sure they get asked for you. Um, our first question um, is from Eric. He's from Bath, New York. And he was curious to know if you see a lot of use of VA health in communities where a VA hospital or a center is, I think compared to where there might not be one. Uh, as far as video to the home uh, and use of telehealth, yes, I, there is still a lot of use. I mean, I know we do a number of patients in and around Buffalo and the suburbs, even though we're, rel you know, a patient may be relatively close as far as traveling. Uh, like I said, there are, for telehealth, there are situations that it's just a little more convenient. Say if you have a family or you're watching kids and you can't get out of the house, I mean, you could still see your provider uh, while you know, taking care of those responsibilities. Or for people that are you know, actively working, if they're uh, on the job, if they can take a, a 15 minute, 20 minute break, or they can on their lunch, connect with their provider to do their session, it just, adds a level of access and convenience for them. Okay, that makes sense. Um, another question from Eric. He wanted to know if the user has to have signed up for E911 with their phone service provider for the system that the petitioner uses to work. No. Uh, no, that the system that we're using is separate from what the veteran has. I mean, it's it's tied into the Video Connect system. We have a we have a support number. Uh, the 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 provider goes through that um, listing just to make sure that everything is correct on the address, and uh, he submits that, and it'll tell them whether or not there are E nine eleven services available in that area. If not, there's a general number that will connect us. Uh, to an operator that will coordinate the uh, services that are needed to get to the veteran. Okay, that's great, thank you. Um, I also have a question from the chat. This is more about the recording and sharing the recording. 
They wanted to know if they could, they work for a library system. Um, they wanted to know if they could forward the recording to their member library because they thought the troubleshooting might help um, some of the librarians who are more anxious about technology and they have something to follow. I say definitely. Uh, the whole purpose of us doing this is to get the word out and to educate the veterans, to make them more comfortable with using technology, because the more comfortable they are with the technology, the more they're going to take advantage of it. Uh, I, you know, we got to get in over that whole barrier of, of um, you know, being afraid that you're going to break something or, or, or uh, not have the knowledge or feeling stupid about using the technology. Um, I think once people get over that, you know, they find, they'll find the convenience and, uh, uh, and see how, uh, you know, advantageous it is for them to take advantage of this. I mean, there are situ you know, telehealth doesn't answer everything, but there are a lot of situations where uh, it doesn't require the patient traveling to a uh, facility in order to see a provider. Hi, hi. Um, I have a clarification question from Heidi. Um, okay. is this, this is for veterans and their families, right? Not the veterans can use it, their families can too? This is primarily, well, it's, it's veterans. It's uh, the only, it's not for the families as far as um, uh, we don't provide health care to the families. Mm -hmm. um yeah so it is it is primarily a veteran service yes okay got it but a lot of times what you know as far as the families go they are involved in their care or a lot of times they are caregivers for their veterans so it's important that they you know know how to uh access this this technology that makes sense okay okay um just checking in to see if there are any more questions from anyone. Do you have any last words, Paul? Do I have any last words? No, I never have last words. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, like I said, uh, you know, this is something that uh, actually I'm very proud of as far as, you know, uh, what we've developed when we started this whole thing. Uh, with especially with VA Video Connect and and when COVID hit, we had a lot of issues and things have really smoothed out as far as you know the issues have been addressed. Uh, we had problems with the software, we had problems with you know capacity, but uh, you know now it's really moved telehealth into the mainstream, and uh, it's just I just want to make sure we get the word out to everybody and get people using it because uh, there's no reason why they shouldn't. Absolutely, I completely agree with that. There's so many services like this out there that are hidden gems for library users, for sure. Um, if you, no one has any more questions, it seems. I just want to remind everyone that I did send out promotional materials that Paul sent along that you can use to distribute around your libraries to inform them of this service. If you did not receive that, um, please email me and I will make sure that gets to you. Um, I will work on getting the recording ready to go and certificates will be coming along hopefully tomorrow. Um, Heidi, am I missing anything? No, I don't think so. Thank you so much, Paul. This is really a valuable uh, resource for uh, library patrons that are veterans that might not be aware of this or are aware of it, but are not comfortable because we know a lot of people are more comfortable asking a librarian than a lot of mm -hmm. other people. Yes, um, yes. I just wanna thank you guys for giving me this opportunity to talk. I, I really appreciate uh, you letting me help get the word out here. Yep, thank and we'll make much. sure um, more of our colleagues get to know about it as well. Thanks again. Absolutely. Thank you okay, so much, thank Paul. You. And thank you, everyone, for spending your lunch hour with us, too. All right. Bye. Bye.